house and goons with greenish skin. So close your eyes and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. <laughs> something, perhaps this time. No, again it does not work. And speaking of things that do not work, Igor, you're late again. What were you doing? I'm sorry, master, but I was busy out in the rain, busily collecting our rain-collecting supplies. <laughs> well, it's better than confusing it with Peter Pe 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 But never mind. Right, master. For now, it is time. Yes, for master. Our national anthem. Yes, master. Ah, oh, Brucey. Someday, I want you to raise the flag. Yes, master. For now, we are going to sing, Brucey, our national anthem. Yes, master. But this time, we will sing it with gusto. Gusto. No, we can't. He's not here. Oh. Anyway, with a bucket, you sing it yourself. Right. One, 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 one. Gory, gory, Transylvania. The werewolves and bats will always maim you. The murky moor will likely claim you as you go stumbling through. Stumbling through. Ooh. Keep humming. All right. Pledge by the sign of the three tall slums that I will do my best to do my duty. To always obey the laws of the werewolf pack. And to never rest until Brucey lives once more and takes his rightful place in the annals of distinguished monsters. And I can once again return to that most gory of all places, Transylvania. As we cross the through. I fooled you. You thought I would hit the top one. Huh. Now what were you doing? Master, I was outside, busily collecting the rain collecting the rain, master. You were busy outside in the rain, collecting the rain, collecting supplies to live today. Never mind that. Never mind that. By the way, what is that bandage on your head? <laughs> you see, master, you should see it outside. It's raining buckets. <laughs> Hey. Please stop it. The zany zoo was all a buzzin' the last time I was there, cause Buona Clyde, the story went, had somehow lost his hair. He'd woken up that morning and found that it was gone. He called upon the animals and soon the search was on. The robins were the culprits, so the rest you all can guess. Buona's hair was in the air and part of that bird's nest. <laughs> Ooga booga, which means it's time for Zany Zoo. Thank you, mates. Thank you. Very nicely done. Nice play of it. Hello there. Hello there. At your service, that's right, for one Clyde Batty, right here. And welcome to Zany Zoo. So nice of you to drop in, because I have some more lovely film you're just going to love. Now, something very interesting today, and you're going to see it very shortly. But I want you to remember one thing. You can go on your own safaris, just like I do, 
because you just have to go to your local zoo. That's all. And you see all the beautiful birds and all the lovely animals all gathered about you. And you can read all about them. It's most interesting. All right. Why don't we get to our film now and let's see what we're going to see today, eh? All ready? Come on then, let's roll our film and find out what it's all about. All right. All set up, all set up. Let's see, got the reels on, focus in. Plugs right. There we go. Switch on. All right. Oh, and look what we've got here today. This is an African Hamadras baboon. Now they're found in Arabia, Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Somalia. Oh goodness, covers a big territory, eh? Now, they usually inhabit rocky and open country or bush, but always live in woodland. Now they occur in, in troops from 10 to 50. That means, well, it's just like the Boy Scouts, isn't it? Boy Scouts and troops. Oh. <laughs> now each troop is a family unit with, with all mating taking place between the members of that troop. Now, a troop consists of males, juveniles, females, and the little babies. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? My goodness gracious. Oh, oh, look at that little baby. Isn't that kitschy, 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 eh? Oh, lovely, isn't it? Now, each member of the troop has a role he plays in hunting for food or to protect the others, you see? They all work together, they do. Look at, look at, look at that. Oh, hello, mums. Going to mums, are you? Oh, that's lovely. Now, the female and young flee from danger. Now, first, while males move away more slowly, you see, so that they become uh, congregated between the source of danger and the mothers and the children. It's kind of a, a kind of a retreating thing, you see. They hold off and make sure that the, the mummies and the little children are all in safety, and then they hold off and keep all the bad chaps away. Now, the members of the troop, they get along with each other very, very well, they do. Now, males have no need to for force others to stay with them, no, no. When a troop is resting or feeding quietly, they gather in groups to kind of groom each other's fern and make things nice and clean. And it's all harmonious. Oh, yes, it's quite nice. They're just lovely, they are. Look, oh, there's the baby again. I oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. Oh, right, all oh, right. Wasn't that interesting? You, oh, I know. You know something? If you're ever going to shoot anything, you shoot it with that camera, eh? Just like that. Then you've got something you can look at for a long, long time. And always remember the words from Bawana Clyde Batty, Ooga Booga, which means a wet bird never flies at night. Does it fly at night? Oh, well, we'll find out another time. All right, mates, I'm coming. I'm coming. It's a more fun day for us, right? Here we go. Wait for me now. Come on. You're right. The moment has arrived. We'll be back soon. It is said by the wise man, the yogi is like the elephant. Both merely an illusion of seven easy to follow steps. If you say that once more, I'm going to send you back to the slime. I asked the old librarian what did he learn from life. He said the first thing was the rule to never take a wife. While they make superb companions and reliable good cooks, women haven't got the knack, he said, of understanding books. But somehow, son, I've often thought of marrying some wench. But when I do, the girl I choose will think and speak in French. I said, oh, that is really the most charming thing I've heard. The librarian said, I don't know why, because I don't speak a word. Mais jamais. Where is he?
Welcome to the library. And I am the librarian. And this is Polly. Prepare yourself to be horrified. And our story for today is entitled The Fox and the Goat. The fox, having fallen into a deep well, was detained a prisoner there. As he could find no means of escape, a goat overcome with thirst came on to the same well, and seeing the fox, inquired if the water was good. The fox, concealing his sad plight under a merry guise, indulged in a rather lavish praise of the water saying it was beyond excellent and encouraged him to descend. <laughs> it's getting you. The goat, mindful only of his thirst, thoughtlessly jumped down. When just as he quenched his thirst, the fox then informed him of the difficulty they were both in and suggested a scheme for their common escape. If, he said, you will place your four feet on the wall and bend your head, I will run up your back and escape and will help you out afterwards. Uh, the goat readily assenting to the second proposal, the fox leapt onto his back and, steadying himself with the goat's horns, reached the safety of the mouth of the well. Skullduggery afoot here, when he immediately made off as fast as he could, the goat upbraided himself with the breach of his bargain when he turned around and cried out, You foolish old fellow! <laughs> If you had as many brains in your head as you had hairs on your head, you would never have gone down before you had inspected the way up, nor have exposed yourself to dangers from which you had no means of escape. <laughs> you frightened me. And the moral of the story is quite right. Look before you leap. <laughs> I've got you. You're horrified. I know that. I uh, don't know that. You're not horrified? Ah, oh, well. Perhaps next time. Until then, the librarian says goodbye. Goodbye. There. I finally got the A's to work faster than the bees. Igor, Igor, please will you stop this horrible racket here? What were you doing anyway? I was doing the boogaloogaloo. Never mind the boogaloogaloo. And what is this? Some records I found in the basement, Master. I think they belong to your grandfather. Really? Yeah. What are the titles there? How much is that sloth? In the window. All right, the all right, all right. Uh, What's on the flip side of that? <laughs> what kind of ghoul am I if I should fall in love? All right, you're not I on know. a stage. You're not on a stage now. Are you sure they belong to my grandfather? Master, I yes, I'm sure. There's one record here. It was his favorite. I, I put it on if it was his favorite. It must be good. There we are, Master. Once my house was haunted and I was nearly taunted, my ghostly unseen fingers wrapped around my pretty neck. This nightly visitation, suddenly with trepidation, I'd wake up in the morning, oh, one great nervous wreck, oh, spiders and creepers that crawled in the hall, six-fingered hands that came out of the wall. I know the reason that it causes it all. I eat boiled fish for lunch. Oh, oh. Uh. Master, naughty. Be very careful, Igor. That was my grandfather, I'll tell you. Hey, I like that one. That was a good song, eh? <laughs> the male man has arrived. I will go and see, Master. You'd better. <laughs> oh, 
Transylvanian lottery. You're kidding. Yes, master. What does it say? Uh, Quick, say. Uh, oh, it says here, yeah, you have won the Transylvanian lottery. Please phone us, and if you can answer a skill testing question, you will win the grand prize. There's the phone number. All right, all right. This is wonderful. This is what I want. Igor, oh, gulars, gulars. I love gulars. Money, gulars. Hello, this is Count Fleitenstein. Yes, yes I know. You want me to answer a skill testing question. Well, give it to me, what is it? If I was standing in the river Seine, where would I be? Where would, just, if I were standing in the river Seine, where would I be? Let I'm me thinking, think. I'm Who thinking. Who was buried in Grant's tomb? No, I, I got it. If I was standing in the river saying, I would be insane. That's a heavy trip. <laughs> the oracle will tell you tales about the palms he's read, of bankers, lawyers, artists, and folks poor and folks well-bred. One day, we thought we'd fool him. I put on a veil and dress. And all got up, I looked quite real. <laughs> we thought he'd never guess. He asked me to sit down, I did. And then he took my hand and said, Madam, I see by this that you are quite the man. How did you know? I bellowed and quickly clenched my fist. Next time, he said, you wear a dress. Make sure you shave your wrist. Welcome, and hello there again. It's your old oracle here. <laughs> I've been making some calculations today on the number of crystal balls I've broken in my life. Now, where am I? Ah, uh, there are nine, twelve, and four, six equals... Yeah. Yes, now I've got it. The total is 9,999 broken crystal balls. Make that 10,002. <laughs> well, I, li I like nice round even numbers. <laughs> now, for our sign for today. Oh, wistful mist whom the gods have kissed. Which sign, whose life, will fortune twist? Ah, and the sign for today is Virgo. Now, kids, all of you who were born between August the 23rd and September the 22nd, ah, that's who you are. You are a Virgo. Virgos are intensely active mentally, in fact, of all the signs. Virgo has the greatest love for knowledge. Virgos love science and scientific reasoning. They may know the answer, but they'll try every combination of possibilities just to see what they are. It's very good to remember that in school. Look at all the different ways to do things, and then you will know, know all too well. So go to it, Virgo, but not before you hear your prediction for the day. Here, we'll get to it now. Not yet. That's bad. Oh, magic crystal. Crystal ball. Tell me now. Tell me. Oh. Ah, yes, it's coming to me now. Yeah, something like this. You may be in the mood to spend money for pleasure, for your own comfort and entertainment, Virgo. So long as you don't get yourself into debt that you can't handle. This spree is all right. Enjoy it. But don't spend all your allowance in one place. And that is very good sound reasoning. For if you, if you take your money and you spend it cautiously, then you'll have enough for, for maybe some candy now and then after school, huh? But not too much. Remember the teeth. We always have to watch for our teeth. Keep brushing those teeth. The wolf man is Ooga Booga. I am the wolf man. Ow. I am the wolf man back among my people, and my people are you. And now it's chime time. Thank you.
According to my calculations, it's one time. Ooh. Take your time. I'm not finished talking to my people. Because we're going to play some of the old and golden goodies. Huh? Yeah, I am the Wolf Man. What's that? Sure, we got it. Three Dog Night? Some of my relatives. Ha! Huh? Goose and bomb berries. What he get? Master, I couldn't find any goose and bomb berries. Instead, I found this old Transylvania Dracola from 1666. Oh, but we need the goose and bomb berries for the cake. Sorry, Although, Master. Although, you know, that was a very good year. Very good year, Master. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Good, Master. If we were to put this into Brucey, yes, maybe we could get him to work, huh? Yes, try it. It's worth a try. <laughs> I'm all set up for this. <laughs> Maybe it would revitalize him, Mister. That's what we want to have happen. <laughs> Fill it up. Yes, Master. Oh. 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 Very good. Master, should I check the oil and water and the battery and the windshield in the meantime? You can check your own work here. Fill again. Ah, oh, this is fantastic. Now, oh, Lucy, you will work for me. Work, Bruce, work. Come on, walk. All right, Bruce. Walk for me. Master, I'm afraid this experiment is another failure. Wait a minute. Maybe it's not getting through. Wait, that's not bad. I've got an idea. Yes, Master. If this Dracola flows through his veins, quickly get a spigot and put it in the sole of his foot. We will see what comes out. Fantastic. It yes. might not be a loss yet. Yes. Very good. Are you ready? I'm ready, master. Aha! Looks potent. Looks terrible, master. Very good. Ah, yes. I like that. Mm, do you realize what this could mean? What, master? Now I could make all my monsters just like Brucey and have the Dracula go through their veins while I would have dispensers from coast to coast. It would be fantastic. We'd make millions here. Drink that. Who, me? Drink it, Igor. <laughs> Now, take good care of yourself, son, and, and, and look, look after your mother while I'm gone. You know, I'm flying to Europe next week, and, well, just everyone wants me to bring them back something. The termites, well, they want some shoes. I mean, wooden shoes, that is. Wooden shoes, get that from wooden shoes. Ah, well, lunchtime. Grilby. I see. I see, it's clear now, yes. The show will resume in but a moment. This show could be a lot worse. <laughs> a Griselda made some donuts. Or at least that was a goal. The only way you'd recognize their donuts was the whole. Hours passed and days went by. No one touched the things. Then we decided they'd be good for games like horseshoe rings. <laughs> we tossed those donuts at the stake, which broke a dozen times. We laughed and said, is there some law to cover cooking crimes? Bats and cauldrons to go together just for making potions. One bat was told by another. 
Bats and cauldrons go together. Unbelievably bad. <laughs> but come on in anyway, because the cooking is really going to improve the whole day. Oh, look, we prepared a few things for you. I think you're really going to love this. It's going to tantalize your taste buds. We call this Mastodon Muck a la Delight. <laughs> Cute name? Love it. Now, we have prepared a few lemon slices, but I don't know why, because I'm not using them. <laughs> now, here we go. We're going to start out with a good old basic. Llama milk. Good. Here we are. There. Terrific. <laughs> and milk is so good for you, whether it be llama, cow, or goat. <laughs> now, uh, the next little ingredient. I saw one over here that I just love. Where is it? Oh, yes. Amazon pilgrim ants. <laughs> and they're cute. Get it. Get it. Oh, well, you get it, too. <laughs> Oh, this is wonderful. I'm having so much fun today. Now, where did the salt go? Oh, yes. Ha no, that's Handy Mountain Puffballs. I can't find my salt. Oh, well, I know what. We'll use some Bond Fast. That's a good substitute. Good. There we are. Now, we mix to a slow, slow thickness. There. Wonderful. Now, for the final ingredient. <laughs> and here we go. Ooh, if I had some salt to put it in your tail, you'd never fly. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Now, this may seem a little strange to you, but the next little ingredient, but you must understand that in order to have this stick to your ribs, you need something that will really be adhesive. So we're going to use glue. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Oh, glue. <laughs> All the glue in you. <laughs> Here we go. Gina Lola Brigida, you're a wipeout when I'm around, babe. <laughs> Wonderful. And now that we've mixed this, here we go to the old cauldron. Oh, bats and cauldrons. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, into the cauldron she goes. Where she lands, nobody knows. <laughs> Cauldron, cauldron, toilet trouble. Cauldron boil and cauldron bubble. And it's taster time. Oh, do you believe in miracles? But that isn't what. <laughs> I have found a way to make Brucey work for us. How's that, Master? We will make him laugh. When a person laughs, they, they do wondrous things with their bodies. You mean like, ha, 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 like that? Exactly like that. Ha, 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 ha. All right. Now we must get him to laugh. How do we do that, Master? Very simple. I want you to get the Jiffy Laughing Instruction oh. Kit. Now, Jiffy? What's that? Never mind what it is. Just get it. Now I'll tell you where it is. First, I want you to go to the far east wing of the castle. When there, you go through the secret passage. The secret passageway. When you get there, go through, turn to your right. You will find stairs. Go right down, way, way down into the forest dungeon. You will find four boxes. It is in the second box. Right, master. Right away. Right away. What kept you? Never mind that now. Give me a hand. Not that kind of a hand, you silly ninny goop. Try this one. Stop the laughter like that. All right. Now, you will open the Jiffy laughing instructions. Because yes, there is a scientific wonder in there yes, that yes. took a man years to do that. Jiffy is very famous, mister. I thought so. <laughs> Fantastic. A feather. A feather? Yes. Let us try it. Doesn't seem to work. 
All right, we'll use it for a pen later. Wait a minute. Now I know what we need. My great-grandfather must know. He has his diary. Now I want you to get it. For it will have the secret within. Here's how you do it. This time, go out the front gate. What? Then you go over the moat. Only 400... Not, 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 400 yards. Then you turn to your right. Go 300... Then you go 300 yards. There, you will find... A, no, 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 no. I will tell you when you go. There, you will find a tree right in front of you. Tree. Do not walk into that tree. Turn to your left. Then you go west, 800 yards. And there, you will find an X. Yes, master. But that's not it. There, you will go east for 300 yards. Then you will find my grandfather's great diary of laughter. Go. I'm too tired now to read it. You read it for me. Oh, laughter. It says here you should tell Bruce a joke and then you'll make him laugh and that's what we'll do. We'll do it. You tell him a joke. I will think of a wonderful joke. Right. All right, here it is. Ha! <laughs> He's up. Ah, this one had them rolling in the aisles for 800 years. Why did the chicken cross the road? Two. Because he had red suspenders. <laughs> no? Wrong. Don't be depressed, Randolph. Your athlete's face will clear up. <laughs> Dr. Petvet met a zebra who spent many sleepless nights working out which stripes come first, the black ones or the whites. I know it doesn't matter, but my problem's quite exotic. But if I don't find out quite soon, I fear I'll go neurotic. The doctor told the zebra, now it's not my place, of course, but I could paint you all one shade and then you'd be a horse. Oh, no, not that, the zebra cried. Not that, oh, please, I beg. I see my problems just the same as chicken or the egg. <laughs> yes, which came first is not what counts. Or oh, what best or what worst. But still, you know, I like to think the black stripes were the first. <laughs> I wonder where that Dr. Pettit is today. Dr. He promised me something very special Dr. today. Dr. Pettit is here, Igor. Oh, look what you brought. I brought you some. Oh, easy, easy, I know darling. what that is. What is that? That is a triple size Technicolor Canary. <laughs> That's very cute, but I'm afraid not. No, this chap is called a golden pheasant. Golden yes, fish. and look at the coloring of the plumage and everything. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Now, here, let's see if we're going to have a little something to eat here. There. Oh, eat seeds. Here you go. Yes, here, Igor. I want you to have some of these seeds, and you can feed our beautiful little friend here. And what does our sign say? Pets are friends. Pets are friends. Definitely. Now, you, oh, boy, a little active today, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to tell you all about the pheasants. Now, now, the pheasant is well established in extreme southern Canada and throughout the northern part of the United States. Now, they breed in oh, late April and early May, and they can lay oh, from, oh, from 7 to 13 eggs. Did you know that? 13? That's right. Yeah, oh, come on now, just settle down. I guess you're a little strange here in the castle, aren't you? <laughs> now, the eggs are, are an olive buff color in, in a nest on the ground hidden by grass or small bush, you see? Yes. Now, the male is a handsome bird with brilliant plumage. Now, just take a look at the... Oh, it's just like looking at a rainbow, isn't it? Beautiful and colors. And did you know something that, that uh, most birds, uh, you'll find that the, the male of the species 
has the most beautiful, beautiful coloring, much, much nicer than, than the ladies, but there's a reason for that. You see, the ladybirds, no, they have kind of a brownish dull color, and that is so they can hide in the grass. They use the, the color of their cells as camouflage. camouflage. That's it. And look after the eggs and everything. That's it. They'll yes. take care of all the little babies while, while these fellows just kind of strut around all the time. Oh, <laughs> showing off. Oh. That's right. Mm. Now, the bird feeds on grain and seed shoots. You have some grain there Since in your I hand. Gave him, I gave him. Here. Well, oh, oh, settle down. There's a little food for you. That's right. We have to feed him well. He's a lovely little chap. <laughs> now, there are 48 species ranging from Asia to the Black Sea, you see. Now, the raising of these birds is, is done mostly in the country, but, oh, they can be raised in the suburbs, too, you know, as well as in the backyard if you wanted to, but you What must... about in the castle? Could you raise one in the castle? Well, I, I don't like to keep things right down in the castle. I mean, I'd like them to have air and sunshine, as all animals should, I believe. And do you want to know something? Guess what his name is. Oh, I could never guess. Goldie, I call it. Goldie? Goldie. Because he's a golden pheasant. That's right. And Igor, Goldie is for you. He's for, for me? You. That's right. That's why I brought him here. Oh, I'm so lucky. Good. But I have to ask, you know... Oh, of course, the sloth again, eh? But well. I think with a bird, he might. Well, let's hope so. All right now, Goldie. Mr. Have sloth, have you ever heard of a golden pheasant? Well, I got one here from Dr. Petvet, and he said that you and me can keep him for our pet. You and me. Is that all right? It's not all right, he said. Oh, I'm it's so all sorry, wrong. Igor. He never seems to change his mind. He's very constant. I must say that for him. He's very but grumpy. Don't you worry, Dr. Pet. That will be returning with another animal for you or a little goodbye, bird. Goodbye, pretty bird. Say goodbye, Gloria. Yellow bird. Goodbye. Eli. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi, oh, silver away! Wrong. Don't go away, <laughs> Having done that. And now, the Oracle is about to answer one of your heavy letters. Out of sight. Oh. <laughs> Dear Oracle, how can you protect yourself from witchcraft or sorcery? Well, being an expert on the field, well, you can take a, a witch to lunch, or you can try some of the traditional protective charms and spells to guard against uh, the evil eye, wear your hair in, in braids, I mean, not the guys, I don't mean that, <laughs> or wear clothing and jewelry with interlacing patterns. Now, this, this will entangle the witch's gaze, you see, and really throw her off the course. But to banish a witch, you boil a pot over an open fire containing milk and three pins that have never been used. But of course, never wash the pot. Huh, a watch pot never boils? Huh, that's silly. Of course they do. I... Excuse me, please. There's someone on the telephone. Yes, this is the Oracle. Really? You're kidding me. All right. Very, thank you very much. It appears I will have to hurry, because, as you see, Igor had, had dinner with Griselda, and his stomach is not feeling too well, so I have to mix up a special solution to get him out of that one. Oh, she's a heavy number. Now, actually, though, there's no need to go to all these lengths uh, to, to, unless a witch has actually put a spell on you. The best way to protect yourself from witchcraft and sorcery is a simple one. Stay away from witches! <laughs> who sprayed 50 cans of insect repellent in his room and never saw another mosquito? He never saw another anything. Ha <laughs> ha! Now, definitely not funny. Uh-oh, lunch time! <laughs> Igor, try and remember my great-grandfather's notes. I've got to have those notes. Where did we leave them? I forgot, master. Oh, you can't forget. We've got to remember. Where did I put them? I can't forget, but I forgot. Oh, we've got to find them. It's important to be... Wait a minute. Of course, why not? You are the perfect one to try it on. Try what on, Master? My new invention. <laughs> master, I'd rather not get involved if you don't mind. I do mind, Igor, and you will do what you are told. Yes, yes Master. My new invention, the Frankenstein memory pill. 
A memory pill. A memory pill, and here it is. I want you to take this pill, Igor, right now. <laughs> good, good. Now, think, Igor, think hard. Think very hard, that pill must work. Come now. Where did he leave the notes? Between the second of the two books on the end of the table, make in pa page 143, the, uh, I forgot to feed Boris. I've got to feed Boris. Fantastic. I've had to Oh, great grandfather. He took the excububerator yes, yes. and he put it in the left side of Brucey. And he put the switch. Yes. He got another spectrum scrub and part. Yes, yes, yes. Go and on. And you know what he did when the monster didn't work? Yes, tell me, tell me. He became a bus driver. Look, I will take care of the humor here. Nothing. Your great, great grandfather. Yes, 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 yes. Three batteries. He three bought three batteries. Wait, I have three batteries. One, two, three. Keep three. thinking. Three batteries. Then three wires. Hold on. He got wires. three wires. I remember Keep three thinking. wires. Three wires. No yeah. Then he connected the batteries to the wires, and then he connected the monster to the to the batteries to the wires in a monster, and right. and then he took the switch, and he put the switch, and I, and then and then. All right, yes, go on, go on. I forgot. You couldn't have forgotten. I've just given you my Frightenstein memory pill. Maybe it wore out, master. It can't. It was working just a minute ago. Well, maybe you should give me another one. Make another one for me. <laughs> I can't do that, Igor. Why not, master? Because I forgot how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> The professor had a theory that a man could learn to fly, so he clambered up upon the roof and shouted his goodbye. He said that if he flapped his arms, he'd soon become a master of all the air, but he should have known he had to flap them faster. Of course, the whole experiment was carried out in vain. Professors are equipped to fly, but only in a plane. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and men and women, and people? People. Everybody. I'm Julia Sumner Miller, professor of physics in this strange, uncommon place. And here we do strange things with nature, and nature does strange things with us. We ask, for example, as follows. Here is a disk to be likened to a wheel, and I have marked a point on it on the edge and a point halfway between the edge and the center, and a point at the center. And I roll the wheel, and I ask, what path does this point on the edge pass through? Consider it as follows. There is the wheel. There is the ground or table on which it rolls. Here I have put a point P, and the wheel rolls. And how do you think the path looks that the point goes through? Answer. It can never get higher than this. And here is what it does. And this is called a cycloid. And it has very remarkable properties which I would invite you to look into. A cycloidal path. The point in the center clearly passes through along a straight line. The path midway has a special name. It is called a trochoid. T-R-O-C-H-O-I-D. Now, why do I raise the question at all? Because this is a wonderful mathematics to explore. And the cycloid has some very special properties about which I shall talk another time. So you see, a rolling wheel is not something just to pass by and forget about. It is something to look at very circumspectly. For your more immediate uh, fun and pleasure, seek out a potato in the shop, in the market, at the fruiterer, at the greengrocer, and some straws, preferably paper. Paper. 
in this place we do not know these modern things, plastic. We make our own straws, in fact. The problem is as follows. I wish to drive a straw through the potato in such a fashion. There it is. I'm going to do it again. There it is. And I so enjoy it, I'm going to do it again. Oh, by the way, when you pull it out, there's a little piece of potato in there which you can French fry. Or German fry, or just fry. You see, this is the way I make my French fry strips. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Oh, didn't quite make it. Now I'm going to do it another way. Going to hold the straw. Watch it. There it is. And somebody says, what is the physics therein, Professor? And I'm going to try now to make it clear. The straw itself is not rigid enough to take a compression delivered to it by this thrust. See, it isn't quite, it bends. So what I do is grasp the straw tightly, squeeze it closed right there, trap some air in there, and then when I make contact with the potato, the compressed air behaves as a piston and gives the straw rigidity. Right! So, what is the virtue of this little uh, time with you? Simple things are not trivial. They must be explored circumspectly and looked at very sharply because there resides amongst them, in them, there is wrapped up in them some extraordinary principles of nature. A good part of the show is going to come on again in a moment if you want to stick around, but you don't have to if you don't want to, because oh, ooga booga. The castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him when next we meet in Frankenstone. Don't come alone.